the first human to merge with AI, it's already started introduction. The idea of merging humans with machines used to live in science fiction, cyborgs, brain chips, telepathic control of devices, these were fantasies for movies and comics. But now it's not fiction anymore, it's happening. The first real humans have already connected their brains directly to artificial intelligence. They're controlling computers with thought. They're sending texts without touching a screen. They're hearing and seeing through chips. And the lines between biology and code are starting to dissolve. In this video, we explore the real-life story of the first humans merging with AI, how brain-machine interfaces work, and what happens when software starts living inside your skull. This isn't a prediction for 2050. This is our reality today. What does it mean to merge with AI? Merging with AI doesn't mean uploading your consciousness yet. Right now, it means building a direct two-way communication channel between your brain and a machine. This is done through brain-machine interfaces, BMIs, or brain-computer interfaces, BCIs. Systems that can read neural activity, decode intentions, and translate them into commands for digital devices. But the next phase goes deeper. AI doesn't just respond to your brain, it helps interpret, predict, and even enhance your thoughts. It's not just a connection, it's a collaboration between biology and artificial intelligence. And in the years ahead, that collaboration may lead to real-time memory assistance, improved emotional regulation, or even rewiring of how we make decisions, reshaping identity at its core. The Neuralink Human Trials In 2024, Elon Musk's company Neuralink implanted its brain chip, called The Link, into a human patient for the first time. The device, no bigger than a coin, was inserted into the skull and connected to the brain via ultra-thin threads, thinner than a human hair. These threads interface directly with neurons, reading brain activity with high precision. What's revolutionary? The chip connects wirelessly to an app. The person can now move a mouse cursor or control a keyboard just by thinking. According to Musk, the long-term vision is even more extreme merging with AI to ensure humans aren't left behind as artificial intelligence surpasses us. Eventually, this system may allow humans to instantly download languages, visualize complex math, or access massive databases mentally, transforming us into a kind of living superintelligence. How the brain chip actually works our brains communicate using tiny electrical signals. Every movement, memory, or intention is encoded in these patterns. The link records these signals, then sends them to an external AI model that decodes the intent, like wanting to move a finger or type a word. The decoded command is then sent back to a device, like a phone or computer, and executed. The entire loop happens in milliseconds, enabling real-time interaction through pure thought. The chip also has upgradable firmware, meaning the software and its capabilities can improve over time without new surgeries. Eventually, it could allow users to text, browse the web, or even control prosthetic limbs as naturally as moving a hand. Future versions might even integrate with virtual reality, allowing users to control immersive digital environments using just brain activity without needing controllers or hand movement. Other pioneers, Synchron and BlackRock, Neurotech Neuralink isn't the only player. Synchron, another neurotech company, has developed a less invasive BMI called the Stent Road, which is implanted via blood vessels near the brain. No open skull surgery required. Patients with paralysis have already used it to send emails and shop online, using nothing but their thoughts. Meanwhile, BlackRock Neurotech has helped patients control robotic arms, wheelchairs, and tablets through implants that detect their brain signals in high resolution. These aren't experiments. They're functioning, human AI hybrids walking among us, with minds extended by machines. More than therapy, these technologies represent a quiet revolution, where disability is not just treated, but redefined as a new form of adaptive strength powered by intelligence. From restoration to enhancement, today's brain-machine interfaces are being used primarily for medical reasons, restoring movement to paralyzed patients, helping ALS sufferers communicate, giving hearing to the deaf or vision to the blind. But the next phase moves beyond healing into enhancement. Imagine memory chips that record everything you see and hear, or AI-powered implants that boost your IQ, enhance learning, or even detect lies in real time. Companies are already exploring focus enhancers, mood regulators, and instant language translation through direct neural input. We're entering a world where human limitations are no longer permanent, they're programmable. If successful, this could birth the first generation of cognitively augmented humans, people with abilities far beyond today's natural limits. The merging of mind and machine intelligence. Once your brain is connected to AI, you don't just send commands, you start receiving suggestions. Think about it. If your implant notices your brain struggling to recall a word or decision, 
it could prompt the answer. If it detects confusion, it could auto-correct your thoughts like Grammarly corrects your grammar. Eventually, this loop becomes so seamless, it's unclear where the human ends and the AI begins. This isn't about mind control, it's about mind augmentation. Making the brain more efficient, focused, creative, and emotionally stable through machine support. This partnership will allow thought processes to scale with complexity, where AI fills in gaps, handles multitasking, and enhances decision-making precision. What it's like to live with a brain implant. So what's it actually like? Patients report that the system feels like second nature after a while. You think, something happens. There's no external gesture or movement, just thought, action. Some describe the experience as empowering, giving back control they had lost. Others say it's mentally exhausting, requiring practice to fine-tune. But here's the twist. The chip learns with you. It adapts to your brain's patterns, creating a personalized AI model that grows smarter over time. This means every user becomes the co-creator of their own machine intelligence. Some report changes in emotional processing, memory formation, or even dreaming patterns, suggesting that these devices may go deeper than we currently understand. What happens to privacy when thoughts are data? As brain-machine interfaces go mainstream, we face an unprecedented privacy dilemma. Your thoughts, preferences, emotions, and even memories become data streams that could be logged, analyzed and, if unsecured, stolen. Who owns your brain data? Can it be sold to advertisers? Can authorities subpoena your thoughts? Can hackers manipulate your intentions? Tech companies promise encrypted, local processing. But as with all tech, what starts private rarely stays that way. If your thoughts are no longer secret, what's left of your free will? Could this lead to mind control? Here's where it gets ethically murky. If A, I can read your thoughts, could it one day change them? We already know that behavior can be influenced through ads, nudges, and dopamine loops. Now imagine those loops being customized at the neural level. Subtle stimulations could be used to train your mood, shift preferences, or even suppress thoughts without you ever knowing. Governments, corporations, or malicious actors could turn brain-connected populations into behaviorally managed systems, where freedom is simulated, but control is absolute. This isn't paranoia. It's a logical extension of merging minds with machines. Is this the end of the human era or a new beginning? Merging with A, I doesn't mean we stop being human. It means our definition of human begins to evolve. We're entering a phase where brains are no longer biological islands. They're network nodes connected to machines, algorithms, and possibly other people. This opens up incredible potential people with disabilities gaining full mobility, enhanced minds solving global problems, humans living with digital memory backups, neural networks that feel like telepathy, but it also opens terrifying risks, thought surveillance, identity loss, brain hacking, cognitive conformity. The question isn't whether we'll merge with AI. The process has already started. The real question is, who controls the intelligence we let into our brains? Humanity 2.0 is plugging in. We are no longer separate from the machines we build. From the first brain chip implants to advanced AI co-pilots in our minds, we are witnessing the rise of a new species. Not fully human, not fully machine. It's thrilling, it's terrifying, and it's already happening. Would you ever get a brain implant to boost your abilities or connect to AI? Would you trust it or fear it? Like, comment, and subscribe for more deep dives into brain technology, future intelligence, and the coming age of neural integration. Because the future of AI isn't just on your screen, it's inside your skull.